Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and to a brand new video. In this week's video, I'll be showing you how I built this modern and minimalistic style bed. This bed is made from solid red oak, so in this video I will walk you through each step that I use in order to build this thing, a lot of the techniques which I have not done before. So with that said, let's go ahead and get things started. So to get started on this build, I will first be doing the legs, which required me to mill up some red oak boards. Now these are quite a bit wider than what I would use on my joiner, so I just took the lazy approach and planed it on each side. And I will be using these boards to laminate together and make a thicker board. Now if you were doing this and you had access to 8 quarter oak, that is what you would want to start with. But I only have access to 4 quarter oak, so I glued two pieces together to get that 8 quarter thickness, which will make the legs of this bed nice and bulky, which is the exact look that I'm going for. Despite taking a little bit more time than it would if you just had thicker stock to begin with, this process does work fairly well. And as long as you clamp them together tightly to hide that inseam, you really can't even tell that these are two boards. So I left the clamps on for a couple hours and just like that my thinner boards were turned into much thicker boards which is kind of a strange situation because most of the time in woodworking you're taking one board and cutting it into smaller pieces but technically I'm doing the exact opposite of that. And if you would prefer to never see me do this process again, well feel free to send all of the 8 quarter or thicker oak that you can find right to my doorstep. Anyway, after the pieces were glued up, we'll rip one edge with the track saw, joint that edge to make sure that it is perfectly flat to the face, rip the opposite edge off with the table saw, and then finally cross cut it to length using the miter saw. In my opinion, the legs are really what stand out on this bed, and that's what gives it that modern look. So I made a few measurements and basically I'm going to cut this one block right down the middle with my track saw to create a pitch that will give me two legs using this one block. Before I made that cut though I wanted to take some additional measurements where both the upper and lower headboards would go. And all of the measurements that I'm making are completely at random. There is no template or specific layout for this. I'm just making marks on what I think would look good and then adjusting it as I go. So as I make these marks for where the curves on the inside of the legs will go, I want to take a brief second and just mention where the inspiration for this bed came from. The reason being that as a content creator and someone who builds lots of different things, I think it's important that we give credit to where something originally came from. That said, this build is inspired by another YouTube channel by the name of Four Eyes Furniture. The guys on there are incredibly talented and originally whenever I saw the picture of this bed I knew that I wanted to try to make it. So in order to keep all of this content as original as possible I will be doing everything in this video completely different than how they made the bed in their video. And that's not to say that my way is better than their way or vice versa, but rather to show that there's multiple ways to get to the same goal. And by doing it this way, I'm demonstrating my thought process on how to build something from a picture. So I doubt that either one of them from that channel will see this video, but just on the off chance that they do, thank you guys for the inspiration. I knew that I wanted to build that bed as soon as I saw the pictures, and this video is the end result of what I came up with. Okay, so back to what I'm doing. Typically whenever you're making legs or a piece that looks something like this with lots of curves, you'll use a template which either requires a CNC to cut out that template, or you could just buy the templates online and use them that way. I'm not sure if my refusal to use and buy templates makes me creative or stubborn, but regardless, I didn't want to use templates on this, but rather try to make them myself. So after drawing the lines on the pieces of where I'll need to make the cuts, I grab my palm router and cut a few circles on those curves of the board using a spiral upcut bit. And the reason that I do this is to get a clean edge using that router bit because it's not really possible to do that with a jigsaw or a bandsaw. 
After I have those circle grooves routed down maybe a quarter inch or so, I'll grab a straight edge and connect those lines again with the router. This gives me a clean line on the top surface to work with, which I can then cut the excess off with a bandsaw and then go back with a flush cut trim bit in my other router and smooth out those curves all the way. Once I have one leg cut out and everything in place to where it needs to be, I can use that leg as a template for the second leg, tape it down, mark the line, cut that out again with the jigsaw, and then luckily my flush trim bit is just barely long enough to cut a groove on the top section of that second leg. So after I have that marked, the bearing on the flush cut trim bit will again ride on the top of that, cutting out that curve on the bottom leg, just like we did on the first one. So after we have the first two legs cut out, we'll use again the first leg as a template to cut out the front legs. Now these will be quite a bit smaller and they only go halfway up. So I'll be able to make both of these legs on the other piece of the boards that I glued together earlier. The process on cutting these front legs out is the exact same process as we did on the back pieces and it's worth noting here that using a bandsaw rather than a jigsaw would be much easier to do this with and in addition to this it would be quite a bit easier just to use those templates like I mentioned earlier so if you are interested in doing something like this see if you can find the templates rather than trying to cut it out with a router just because this takes quite a bit more time than it would if you did have those templates. So with the legs finished up, at least for now, we will shift our focus over to the rails, the footboard, and the headboard of this bed frame. The process of each of those pieces begins with some rough sawn red oak. Now the boards that I have here are a little over an inch thick and we'll plane everything down to its final thickness a little later in the video, but for right now we want to leave these boards as thick as we can. Because the main headboard was almost 20 inches wide, I had to join a couple boards together. Now looking back at this, if I was redoing this, I wouldn't have bothered with doing dominoes here because I will be running this through the planer, but I did use some dominoes just to make sure that everything was aligned during this glue up. So while the glue on that headboard set up to dry, I grabbed all the other pieces to cut out the rails and the footboard of this bed frame. So I'm ripping all of the oak pieces I have here to 10 inches wide, which would be the width of each of the rails and the footboard. And this is the point of the build where things tend to get a little complicated which is caused by the point of the build where we need to attach that foot and headboard panel to the leg pieces that we cut out earlier. Now the problem with this is that we essentially have a giant butt joint of two pieces lining up against each other where the grain runs in opposite directions, which makes it difficult to connect because any type of domino, tenon, dowel, or anything like that will restrict wood movement, which could cause that interior panel to crack over time. So to get around that problem, you can see here that I am cutting a 3 quarter inch dado groove right down the exact center of each of these pieces. And I am taking multiple very small passes, just cranking the blade up a little bit each pass. I think I use maybe 10 or 12 cuts altogether. So if you do use a dado blade in this manner, you want to take off just a little material at each time, which will finally give you a nice groove that that interior panel we made earlier can slide right down in between those and then held into place by loose dowel joinery, which we will get to a little later in the video. the groove is cut in the exact same manner for the larger legs which will be at the headboard of the bed 
And while this cut is not the easiest cut of all time, by taking it slow and making multiple passes of shallow cuts, I felt pretty comfortable making this cut overall. A nice set of digital calipers is extremely useful in this next step, which is planing the headboard and the footboard down to the proper thickness. If too much is taken off with the planer, then that panel may be seated too loosely down in the groove. However, on the contrary, if that panel is left too thick, it could cause the outside groove tongues to crack, essentially breaking those leg pieces. So it is extremely important that that panel is the exact same size as the groove or as close to the same size as you can get it. Next up was to trim each of the panels to the proper length. So I used the track saw on the big panel and then just my miter saw on the other smaller panels. So I first double checked to make sure that the panel would fit down in that groove and once it did I made a line about an inch and a quarter off of the edge and then just marked equal spacing on four different spots to be drilled out on the drill press. So the way I'll be joining these pieces together is a bit different and I don't think that I've actually seen this done before. So I take the same drill bit I used to drill the holes on the leg out and score the inside panel by putting the drill bit down in each one of those holes. Next I line the domino up and I plunge vertically which creates an elongated slot which just happens to be the exact same size as the drill bit that I used. And in case you're wondering I'm using the 8mm cutter head in the domino and I used a 5 16th inch drill bit whenever I drilled the holes in the leg. So I can pin those holes similar to how you would do if you were doing breadboards on a tabletop. Before I did that I wanted to cut the excess off of the table leg. I thought about leaving the curved edge up there to begin with, but I didn't care for how it looked so I cut it flush with the top of that panel. Next, dowels can be hammered into the hole but also into the slot all the way through. And usually you'll use glue on the outside of this, but I decided to just leave them as a dry fit. The reason being that I wanted to see if they would hold up over time. Now since this bed frame is for myself and I'm not giving this or selling this to somebody, I'll be able to monitor that wood movement and if there is anything that goes wrong with it, I should be able to fix it. So with all those dowel pins hammered in place, here is a first look at the headboard assembled. I think this is an incredibly aesthetic piece and I really like how those curves fit together to form the headboard. So at this point we have the headboard, footboard, and both side rails done, which is great, but that really doesn't do anything for us if those pieces can't be put together. Now in order to connect all the pieces together, but also to have them come apart if we need to move the bed after it's assembled, we'll be using these bed rail fasteners, which are basically just two separate pieces that snap together to hold everything in place. So using a spiral upcut bit in the router, we'll first recess a slot for the first bracket to set down in. 
On the second bracket that goes in the rail, there are two extra tongue pieces that come out to connect those together. So I just grab my hand router and free cut those pieces that will slide down in that first bracket. Here's a quick demo of how these pieces connect together. There is a link to this hardware in the description as well as all the other tools in the video. So if you're interested in this, be sure to check out the description where you can pick up a set yourself. Once the slot is cut out and those extra slots are cut out in the middle to accept the other piece that will be on the rail, we can just use screws to secure this in place. Now with the other end of the bracket, we are essentially going to do the exact same thing on the rail. The rail is a little bit more difficult to do because it has to be clamped at an awkward angle in order for you to get the router on there. But the idea is the same. The good thing about this is those brackets are pretty thin, maybe an eighth of an inch or so, so you don't have to plunge that far down with the router. Just enough to make sure it's flush with the outside of the board. Again, on these brackets, there were two little notches on the back where those hooks looked like they had been welded or secured in place. So I just used a Forstner bit to recess a quick hole where they would fit down in place. When working with end grain like I am in this shot, you want to be gentle with putting the screws in place. Start them and then back them out several times to make sure that that end grain board doesn't split. Next, I grab my palm router and using a round over bit, just soften up the edge of all the pieces. So now we're looking at the inside of the rails on each side of the bed. The slats that I'm gonna use for this are just two by four boards. So I put some two by four cutoffs at the top to mark the spacing, then glued a scrap oak board on the side to act as a shelf for those slats to sit on. So at the time of filming, I didn't realize that my camera died whenever I put all the pieces together, but those brackets just snapped together for the bed frame to be assembled. Then I just measured across the frame for the distance that the slats would need to be, and finally cut the slats just using the miter saw. At this point in the build, I was getting pretty tired from all the work I had done, so I decided to test this thing out. And I will admit that it probably would work better with a mattress, but I was able to get rested up and get a good night's sleep, which was a good thing because I definitely needed my energy for the next 5,000 hours of sanding that needed done. Thankfully for you, this is a YouTube video, so you can just ignore the 5,000 hours of sanding that happened and we will skip right to the next step which was to add a center brace down the length of the bed frame to take some weight off of the slats and give them some inner support rather than just having all the weight on the outside pieces of the rails. The brackets that I have here can be found pretty much in any hardware store. These are actually used for the beam support when building a deck. And if I was redoing this, I would probably build some type of similar cleat made out of oak, but these things are about 95 cents a piece, and they're also very easy to attach to the frame, so I just decided to use those. I also left the space in between them conveniently the exact size as a 4x4 post, so that a little later on, before I assembled this for the last time, I could put that down in there to make some middle feet for the bed frame. So at this point the build is basically finished. The only thing I had left to do was to finish this. I'm using Rubio Monocoat. This is the pre-color intense black which I followed up with Rubio Charcoal and finally Rubio Black Maintenance Oil. This gave an incredible looking finish. It was a little bit higher maintenance and slightly more difficult to use than I intended. And I say that because the black finish is highly dependent on getting that pre-color everywhere. If you miss any spots with that pre-color, 
the black finish won't be as apparent as you want. Anyway, after the Rubio dried and cured, everything was ready to be put in. Now I will admit that the lighting in these shots is not the best, but anyway, I carried everything in, all the pieces snapped together. There's that middle brace with the two 4x4 posts which were just secured with screws, and then I decided to lay the slats down instead of standing them up. Anyway, that'll wrap it up for this one. Here's a couple last shots of everything before I had it stained. I was really happy with how this turned out and this was a fun build. So if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of this build. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.